Canelo's pursuing Jaime Munguia for Cinco de Mayo. Unbelievable. Push the weight in the flex, flex, the live is one in the six. Hey, with the runner boy, you nigga, no question. Yo, you would run a motherfucker high stepping. Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey, motherfucker, never learn your lesson. Hey, I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boo. I mean, they walk the drink, blood things out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a hope. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Drew Titan, Braun Song Deck, shout out to the mighty LDBC. Um, you know, at, at this point, um, uh, it's 2024. I've come to the uh, conclusion that uh, uh, um, bickering and fussing with uh, people who are fans of fighters and not actually supporters of the actual sport. You guys and women mean nothing to me. In fact, you guys behave like women. You know, back in the days, uh, when I was in junior high school, there was a, a magazine called, um, what was it called? Right On Magazine. It's a couple of those magazines, and they catered to the uh, hip-hop and R&B culture. And they, they used to have posters or full spreads of your favorite rapper or favorite R&B singer. When I was in junior high school, you know, a popular singer was like guys like I'll Be Sure, you know, guys like Keith Sweat. Your favorite rapper was maybe, you know, I don't know. I don't know, LL Cool J. And um, the, 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 the girls my age, you know, it was a junior high school. They would take buy the magazines and take the posters out, hang them up in their bedroom or, you know, uh, paste it in their uh, loose leaf notebook. I'm going back, y'all. I'm going back to the 80s, y'all. Um. <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> these um man fans today remind me of those girls that i went to school with now here's what i mean i have no problem with jaime Mungia. Uh, he's been around for a little bit um he's a tough guy he's very game i remember a few years ago when um he was telling about, hey man, I want that Gennady Golovkin smoke. And they said, yeah, pipe down, kid. You, you, you're too green. I said, man, if he wants to smoke, give it to him. Because at that time, Gennady Golovkin wasn't doing anything but chasing behind Canelo. He got not one, not two, but three fights. The third fight, we didn't even know he was getting, but that's a whole nother story. Um, I guess Jaime Munguia needs a breakout fight. I mean, I like the fight. Uh, because Dervinchenko, he had, it was a tough fight, but um, a Canelo payday? Payday? Do you want payday? Um, last I checked, you know, Jaime Munguia is Mexican, right? I thought this guy, Canelo, doesn't fight Mexicans. You know, but, you know, yesterday I'm lying, today I'm telling the truth, <laughs> right? Um, I guess, you know, Canelo's the face of boxing. He can do whatever the hell he wants, right? I guess so. Well, if this is the type of behavior that um, you fan boys and girls are okay with, then that's absolutely fine. You know, I'm not I'm not going back and forth with you, uh, with you clowns ever again. I'm really not. Um, but let me ask you this. With total respect to Jaime Munguia, I'm not disrespecting the young man. He does need a breakout fight. If you think this is the fight for him, cool. But let me ask you guys a question to the Canelo Man fans. Do you think Jaime Munguia will beat Canelo Alvarez? All right, let that sink in. All right. Does he have a chance? Here's my response. It's boxing. It does. He, he, so I'll say he does. Will he beat Canelo? I've watched a lot of this, this, this young man's fights. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. But if Canelo wants to fight him and y'all want to pay for this on Cinco de Mayo, fine. Go ahead and pay for it. I'm not stopping you guys from doing anything that you guys don't want to do at all. You know, I'm not, you guys want to do, rather. Um, but let me ask you a question. Would you rather see this fight on Cinco de Mayo or David Benavidez versus Canelo on Cinco de Mayo? And this is a man that said, I don't fight Mexicans. I'd rather, th I'd rather not fight Mexicans. 
So now you're willing to break that rule and fight a Mexican rather than fight an American. Did you hear what I said? Because David Benavidez doesn't need working papers to be here. He was born and raised in America. In America. His father's Mexican and I think his mom is Ecuadorian. So he doesn't even meet the uh, he doesn't even meet the criteria in which Canelo says he'll never fight. And I've been saying this for the longest. I said, man, he David's not Mexican. His dad is. And his mother is Mex is, is Ecuadorian. So you can remove that excuse as to why Canelo won't fight him. Just stop that. That shouldn't even be that shouldn't even been spoken on. But even when these clowns brought it up, I say, D David still doesn't meet that criteria. So what are we talking about here? Listen, family, I'm keeping this so simple because this is getting old at this point. All right. I'm actually tired of, of, of having these conversations. I would love to have conversations of potential fights. Um, people meeting in the same weight class. You know, y'all do know that this is getting exhausting at this point. Anyone that is cool with this, you know, fine. But just I, I understand that um, to celebrate uh, Canelo's, what, 300 million, 350, 300, 400 million dollar empire that he's built off of throwing hands and you're not seeing a dime. It's one thing to be proud of the man for his accomplishments. I'm not saying not to be proud of him. I'm not saying that. We're talking about 1D, mano y mano. Facing the challenges and fighting your contemporaries. Remember, he tried to do a cash grab against Bivol because Bivol looked like crap in his pride fight. And that backfired on him. And by the way, he could have went up and fought the WBC champion in Arthur Betabiev, but we all know how that would have ended. If you don't believe me, fine. You should have told him to take that fight. But he fought Bivol, which looked like the wounded animal, and it backfired on him. He goes down to 168. And we get a third Gennady Golovkin fight, a fight that he said was out of system and is done. This guy double talks and nobody seems to hold him accountable. All we do is point out the violation. You know, look, he said this and now he's doing this. Stop me when I'm lying. I'm not. Yeah, I'm finally fighting Charlo. Good. Which one? The smaller one from 154. That made sense. So Jamel goes in there and lays an egg. Fine. What's next for you? We're gonna, I'm going to fight on Cinco de Mayo. Fine. Who are you fighting? And you, y'all know it's supposed to be David Benavides. You know that. He's And he pursued. He reached out to Jaime Munguia. This is your king? Now, I know. I know a lot of people are going to say, hey, man, you know. He's a, he, he has a certain amount of fights on his contract. He's going to reach out to David Benavidez and then you'll see. Well, look, I'll talk about it when, when he actually makes me see. Because right now I'm looking at what he's doing. And truth be told, he should have been took care of David Benavidez a long time ago. He should have been took care of Bubu Andre a long time ago. But he's giving you three fights with Gennady Golovkin. The third one didn't even have to happen. He's giving you Avni Yildirim. That Avni Yildirim fight, that, that, the fact that he took that fight, you guys have no argument. The, 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 the argument of what has so-and-so done to deserve a Canelo fight, that doesn't even exist anymore as soon as he fought Avni Yildirim. Then when he's mentioned, uh, then when you mention David Benavidez, he talks about he don't want to fight Mexicans. I said, David is American. What are you talking about? And then he turns around and does this. Munguia's team is saying, yo, man, this guy reached out to us. So I'm not going to fault Munguia if he takes the payday. Fine, go ahead and take it. Who am I to say he don't deserve it after this man done gave Abner Yildirim, who's his former sparring partner, a payday? Whatever, man. Obviously, Canelo can do whatever the hell he wants to do. And as long as he has the support of his fan base, he can do whatever he wants to do. But as a supporter of the sport, man, you guys are man fans. 
Is Munguia better than David Benavidez, man? All right, you know, with dis with, with no disrespect to, to, to Jaime Munguia. Let's keep it clean. Because I don't want to disrespect the young man. You would rather see this over David Benavidez on Cinco de Mayo in Vegas or in Dallas. And I'm talking to that demographic. I mean, for real, man. Y'all going to put up with this? Y'all not going to say anything? I'm not even ripping Canelo. I'm not even. I'm just pointing out these facts, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all are not tired of this. And listen, man, this is the type of time I'm on in 2024. If boxing begins to slowly die. Look in the mirror. Y'all killing it. While I'm pointing out fights that should happen and who's ducking and not fighting their contemporaries. These fighters have these weird fans that jump into my comment section and start cursing me out and they're being racist and racial and all kinds of weird stuff and all I want is the fights I ain't got a problem with Jaime Munguia but I'm asking the audience Benavidez is right there man with a better resume than Munguia what are we doing here what are we doing To justify this move right here is disgusting. And again, I'm not disrespecting Munguia. But y'all guys know David Benavidez is the better opponent for Cinco de Mayo. Stop this. Ridiculous stuff like this takes the attention off of what really needs to be happening. When the best are not fighting the best. When you got MMA guys getting top tier opponents at the highest level in boxing y'all can't complain about guys like the Paul brothers putting on blockbuster events you fake fans and this is no disrespect to the Paul brothers because they actually love boxing but you fake fans pay attention to the wrong stuff y'all y'all justify and stand in the pocket for the wrong stuff Y'all breathe life into those people to do things like that. Do y'all know Ryan Garcia was just no, he was nothing more than an internet star. And look at him now. Y'all did this. Man, I could go on and on, but I'm not. But I'm not doing this with y'all. I'm really not. I'm really not. I'm pointing out the discrepancies and y'all take it how y'all want it, man. And when you turn around, just so understand, this behavior killed HBO. This behavior killed Showtime. And just because boxing is jumping to uh, 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 Amazon Prime, trust me, every business venture has a deadline. Within two to five years, how much money can we make and is it worth keeping? You think Prime is going to be there forever? For, uh, for boxing, you think boxing is going to be, be there forever on Prime? Come on, man. All this moving around and jumping around is for a reason. Boxing has become a cancer. And eventually when people are stopped, when they when they when they stop when they're willing to stop putting money into this, that's when everyone's gonna kick off and say, oh crap. We got all these fighters, but there's the, the networks don't want to pay for any of our guys. You know why? Because you new fans have ADD, attention deficit disorder. Y'all need Ritalin and Prozac and all kinds of weird stuff. I may start talking MMA. Because MMA isn't killing boxing. Boxing is killing boxing. So y'all do what y'all want with this. This is this is ridiculous. Bronx on deck. Move!